Ladies and gentlemen, here we are in Clarendon, in Four Parts, in Maypen, right across the street from the, the barber shop, the police station where Little Nzinga King was separated from a culture. My friend and revolutionary activist, Ras Ayavai, my friend. How are you today? Because I know you organized a very successful uh, protest on the 6th of August, which was seen way across the world. And you're here again today. And you're not giving up, are you? Today, the 10th, but it's a team, you know, it's Rastafari working in your Nison, Rastafari coming together, as you saw in on the 6th. It was the 12th tribe of Israel, the Baba Shanti, the Naya Bingyada, the Millennium Council, the Garbiites, the, the, the Pan African movement. I mean, people from the human rights agency, attorneys at law coming out. The African people who love justice came out in Nelson Mandela Park on Independence Day to defend their anger, to say enough is enough. The Rasta man, the Rasta woman, the Rasta community, not just in Jamaica, globally has suffered tremendously and Jamaica has set the tone for this kind of discrimination across the world. It was when Jamaica started this discriminatory action. It started with the colonial authorities who said sweep we under the carpet. Get rid of this pernicious cult that is rising up in Kingston. That carry the look of salty cannibals and deluded creatures. That was the colonial government. That was the daily gleaner describing us in those manner. Yeah? And, and we see even the, 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 the government, our own government after 62, took the button. And what did they do? Launch a post in your attack in the Coral Garden massacre in 1963. And it has been happening before even Coral Garden because Leonard P. Owell, one of our pioneers, or the pioneer founding father, he suffered tremendously up in Pinnacle. Pinnacle was raided incessantly. You know, we see in the 70s, Rasta was held on the street and trimmed with machete and scissors. And, and, and listen, the Rastafari community in the UK had to come out and march on the embassy. Can you imagine the Rastas in the UK must be saying, no, but, we, but did we not march on behalf of the same foolishness in the 70s? Then why in 2021 we have to go again and march? And I'm sure it's only the rains that is preventing ones in the UK to go and march against the Jamaican embassy in the UK. And we are saying, if there's an allegation that, that the officer Mitchell cut the locks of Princess Enzinga. Then why is it? Why is it we are not hearing from the investigators? The commissioner of police was here. Yeah, Indicom was here. They were all here, and I think the public defender was alongside them. Taxpayers' money was used to, to fuel those nice SUVs to come down to Fort Bath, and it's over a week now. What did what did Officer Barber said? Did she when she was asked? Did you cut the locks of Enzinger King while in custody? What did she say? We need Indicom to come out and tell the people that yes, she acknowledged that she did. No, she said she's done. But we are not yet complete with our investigation. At least that would have satisfied us to a certain degree and we would have been more subtle in awaiting the final outcome. We heard the Prime Minister saying he's awaiting the outcome. Madam Grange is saying the same thing. And yes, we agree they have to await the outcome. But I think this doesn't need a rocket scientist. It doesn't need a surgeon, it doesn't need a neurosurgeon. Did you cut the locks? It's either yes or no. So. But brother um, Ross Ivy, when a policeman uses deadly force with his firearm and it is questionable or under investigation, isn't he removed from front duty? Most definitely. So why isn't this police officer removed that's, from frontline duty? That's the question we are asking. And, and she's so silent, she has been too silent. And listen, her silence has placed the police force in disrepute. I am a commissioner of police. You can't make our name a drag in a field so because when we attack, it seems like a every police, you know, and we know it's not every police. Because there are some police out there who that never attempt to do that. Yeah? But when she has a bad egg, did something like that and is silent, 
she caused the judgment to reverberate and take on global promotion and the Jamaican police force just look like a bag of violators. You know, so we want her to clear the air now. It's either you do it or you don't do it. You know, stand up for your action, yeah? And the commissioner should, when he came here, say, well, we spoke with him, um, Commissioner, um, 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 Officer Barber, and Addis, uh, Officer Barber said she did not. But we are investigating further. Or did she do it? Did she do it? Uh, yes, she said she did it. But we are investigating further and we have now relieved her from duties pending the outcome of the case. We need to hear something. This is a human right violation. This is a constitutional violation. This is sacrilege. You know, it's not just here she cut it. She taught sacred locks, the consecration, where God Almighty tell all the mothers, see that now, put any razor scissors or comb in on this child's head. The angel Gabriel tell Mary that about Yahshua. The angel Gabriel tell Hannah, the mother of Samson, not touch this child here because the child shall be a Nazarite unto God. Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, Samuel, grew up in the church of Eli, in the temple of Eli, as a dreadlock Nazarene. So the locks are not just one piece of weave she cut off. And if she did cut off a piece of weave, she still violate any woman. She got to touch the consecration of the Almighty. This is sacrilege. It's worse than cutting ear. This is a serious charge. And, 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 and Officer Baba must come out. Miss Mitchell, you must come out and say if you do or not and stop. Shame the police force. Because we know the police force have respectable people too. As well as them have counterfeit elements too. And, and as the commissioner said, the police force has no room for these kind of actions. If found guilty, she will be released from her duty. And the Prime Minister, I think, said the same thing. And Madam uh, Babsy Grange, cultural minister, is saying the same thing. We are now awaiting, but that we are telling too long. So you will continue to protest for your rights no matter how long it takes? never cease the fire. Never. Till Babylon walls burn down. No. Until justice has served its course, the fire will continue to burn. We have been here since morning in the heat of the sun, getting all the, the vitamin D and getting all the energy. Just, the police have been cooperative. We have to give them props. For parts, police have been very cooperative. They have come over to us. They have investigated our cause and our mission. And, you know, they just ask that we keep it real as they know we would have done. And we are, we are here hours now, and the fire still are burning. Oh, and in <laughs> Thank you very much. Rastafari, oh. ladies and gentlemen. Oh. Rastafari. Oh. Oh. Here you have it, ladies and gentlemen. One of the organizers, Ras Ayavai, as we speak about the atrocities of Nzinga and what has been happening. Ladies and gentlemen, we are in four parts at the four parts police station just right across the street. And we're here because we'll never stop blazing this fire.